Welcome to ENB 339 lecture number 2 on transformation matrices. Today's lecture is about finding the position of the tool point of a typical robot arm. So the tool point uh, is the part of the robot which usually does a useful thing like welding or picking up something and it's generally at the end of the robot arm. Uh, the lecture is about finding where this is located based on the dimensions of the robot, so how long its various links or arm parts are, and also the angles of the joints. The general challenge that we'll be addressing today is shown in this schematic. So if we have a point P, which is expressed or known in one particular reference frame, so in this case I've drawn it right next to the tool point reference frame or reference frame 2, uh, and we might know that this is one meter along in the z direction in reference frame 2. Often we need to find out where this point P is in terms of a different reference frame. For instance, we might want to find out where point P is relative to reference frame 0, which is the base of the robot, or joint 1. So in this slide, I've used some more formal terminology to describe where point P is located in reference frame 2. Uh, in reference frame 2, its location in the x2, y2, z2 coordinates is simply 0, 0, 1, because it's 1 meter along in the z2 coordinate direction. Now the problem is we may want to find out what P superscript 0 is. In other words, where location P is within reference frame 0. Uh, and you might want to take note of this is the general convention for writing these coordinates. You use the superscript to define what reference frame you're locating the point within. Now in many cases, even when you have a, a 3D arm with several joints, you're able to work out what P superscript 0 is just by simply drawing a schematic of the robot arm and then looking at it and using your knowledge of, of geometry and 3D visualization uh, to work it out. And this is what you can do in this particular case. Uh, you could draw the schematic like I have on the right and draw a drop down line from point P uh, into the uh, X0, Y0 reference frame uh, and work out based on that what P superscript 0 is. And in this case it's simply 303. It's located three units along the x0 direction. Uh, it has no displacement relative to the y0 direction, and it's also located three units, or three meters, in the positive z0 direction. So that's why it's 303. Uh, so in these sort of cases, it, it's quite easy to do. And you should always look to see if you can quickly determine the answer by just visual inspection. Of course, in many real-world situations, or with more complex arms, it's not going to be this easy to work out uh, where a point is in a certain uh, robot coordinate frame. Uh, this is an example like the last one, except that joint 1's reference frame uh, has been rotated slightly around the Z0 axis. Uh, and this actually links quite closely to the tutorial uh, for this week. Uh, in this case, it's a little harder to, just by simply looking at it visually, uh, work out where point P is in terms of reference frame 0. Uh, so I've sort of drawn a schematic of how you might go about doing this, uh, but it'd be a little more complicated. You'd be able to do it in this situation, uh, but what you've got to remember is that your robots may have uh, many more joints than this, uh, and they must may be in much more awkward or complex uh, orientations uh, which make this problem pretty much insurmountable. So instead of trying to do impossibly hard uh, mathematics and geometry, uh, what we can do is, is apply a standard process, and that's what we're going to build up in this lecture. So what we're going to get into in this lecture is forward kinematics. Uh, so each joint uh, in a robot has its own reference frame. It has its own uh, set of x, y, and z axes, uh, which point in a, a certain orientation. Uh, these axes have their own origin at the joint, uh, and, and this is how we sort of define our standard convention. When we want to uh, look at how the orientation of these reference frames varies when you go from one joint to the next, uh, what you want to look at is 
matrices called transformation matrices. And these are matrices which help us make these uh, translations and, and rotations in space. Uh, and we're going to work out how to make them up now. So first, a bit of reinforcement about uh, coordinate systems and, and relative reference frames. Uh, in this 2D example, I've got a point P uh, located uh, in space. Uh, and what we can do is talk about where point P is located in reference frame 0 and relative to reference frame 1. Uh, the terminology is the same as before. You use a superscript to describe which reference frame you're talking about. Uh, and then you can just, in this case, just do it through visual inspection. So in reference frame 0, uh, point P is a little way along the x0 axis and quite a way along the y0 axis. Uh, it's actually at 4 and 8 in those two directions. And that's how you would draw or describe point P in reference frame 0. Uh, same for in reference frame 1, except in this case, the point relative to the x1 axis is actually in the negative direction. So you described as point 1 is at negative 3 and 7. You can also use uh, this convention to describe where the origin of a set of axes is relative to another reference frame. So for instance, if we wanted to talk about where the origin of reference frame uh, 1 is relative to reference frame 0 or within the coordinates of reference frame 0, uh, we would look at how long along the x0 axis the origin was located and how long along the y0 axis the origin was located. So in this case, it's about 10 units in the x0 direction and about 3.3 .3 units in the y0 direction. So the convention here is the subscript, uh, in this case, O subscript 1. Uh, the 1 refers to the origin that you're talking about and the superscript is as before. The superscript describes uh, within which reference frame you're giving these coordinates. And you can do the same thing in reverse. So the second expression here, O subscript 0 superscript 1, is where the origin of the reference frame 0 is located within the coordinate system of reference frame 1. Now the reason that we need to come up with this standard mathematical process for transforming between frames or working with coordinates between different frames is you can't just do it through simple addition. So in this example, uh, we have a point P, once again, uh, in this diagram. Uh, and in reference frame 0, point P is located at 4 and 8. You can also express where origin of where the origin of reference frame 0 is within reference frame 1. Uh, in this case it's at negative 10.3 2. So that's where origin 0 is within the coordinate system of reference frame 1. Now if we were trying to work out where point P was expressed in the coordinates of reference frame 1 instead of 0, you might think that you could take P superscript 0, so where point P is located within reference frame 0, and just add it to the relative location of reference frame 0 to reference frame 1 uh, to get your answer for where P is in reference frame 1, or P superscript 1. However, because of various rotations, in this case the X1, Y1 axes are also rotated, relative to x0, y0, you can't just do this addition. And if you do do it, you, know, you get the wrong answer. So this is why we need a standard process which takes into account both uh, transformations and rotations. And that's what we're doing in this slide. So in this slide, we're coming up with a way of transforming uh, one coordinate system into another coordinate system. So what I've written up the top right uh, is an attempt to work out what axis x1, x subscript 1, so this is the, the x-axis in reference frame 1 is, a way to convert coordinates along that axis into coordinates in the x, x0, y0 reference frame. Uh, and you can do this by visual inspection. So if you look at the x1 uh, 
axis, which we'll just call a unit vector. So we'll just make it of length one to make everything simple. Uh, if we want to look at how this transforms into the x0, y0 axis, we can just look at how its components are split up. So if you drop down vertically from the end of the x1 axis, uh, you'll hit the x0 axis. And this distance along the x0 axis is through simple trigonometry, cos theta. So that is the component of x subscript 1 that ends up along the x0 axis. And likewise, you can go uh, from the end of the x1 axis, you can go horizontally left until you intersect the uh, y0 axis, and that gives you the component of x subscript 1 that is along the y0 axis. Uh, and that, through simple trigonometry, is sine theta. And so that's what we've written here in this uh, two-unit uh, column vector, just that the components of x1, axis x1, when expressed in the coordinate system of reference frame 0 are simply cos theta and sine theta. And you can do the same thing for the components of the y1 axis, uh, and we've done that on the right. And then what you can do is form a rotation matrix by putting these two uh, column arrays next to each other. So we've just joined them together, uh, and this is a general rotation matrix for transforming points in reference frame 1, which is the subscript, into reference frame 0, which is the superscript. So how do we actually use this, uh, this little simple matrix we've made to do point transforms? Well, all you need to do is multiply your original point in the original reference frame. So for instance, P superscript 1 is the location of point P in reference frame 1. If we want to work out what its coordinates are in reference frame 0, we just multiply P superscript 1 by R subscript 1, superscript 0. This is our rotation matrix uh, that we've just worked out, and this will convert the point P, currently expressed in reference frame 1 coordinates, into reference frame 0 coordinates. So if we substitute in the matrix, uh, that the rotation matrix we worked out in the last slide, uh, your expression is written there in the second line. And this is a general expression. Notice we don't have a specific angle written in or anything like that. Uh, depending on what the relative orientation of the two axes are to each other, uh, you can substitute in whatever appropriate angle of theta is needed. So now we'll do a simple example. Now, so if we've got a point P defined in reference frame 1, so uh, it's P superscript 1, and if this is uh, 0, 1 within reference frame 1 and we know that the relative rotation of frame 1 is that it's been rotated 90 degrees in the positive direction from frame 0, uh, we can use this matrix to find out where P is located within reference frame 0. So this is a schematic, it's always good to draw a diagram. Uh, first of all we've got the, the two sets of axes, we have the x0, y0 axes and then rotated 90 degrees to in the counterclockwise direction uh, we have the x1 and y1 axes and we have our point P which is one unit along in the y1 axis direction. So that's what we write for P superscript 1 uh, it's at 0, 1 within reference frame 1. Our rotation matrix well we know that the rotation from axis or reference frame 0 to reference frame 1 is 90 degrees in the positive direction. So we substitute 90 degrees into this matrix, this rotation matrix, uh, cos of 90 is 0, uh, negative sine of 90 is negative 1, sine of 90 is 1, and cos of 90 is 0. Uh, and that's what our 0, negative 1, 1, 0 matrix is. Uh, we do our substitution into the third line, which is our standard 